What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle where we were recently gnawed upon by a giant wolf. I learned that lesson the hard way, so don't mess with wolves. Unfortunately, we had to rest here. We were out in the rain and it was going to kill us either way. If you stay out in the rain for too long in this game, you will totally die. You will be totes my goats dead. Like, don't even play with it. You're going to die. I'm just letting you know. Rain is actually really, really dangerous in this game. Equally as dangerous as our lovely furry friend over there. I'm going to start a fire real quick because I need to purify some water. And our body temperature goes down as a result of our laceration. So I think maybe being able to warm myself up for a little bit is going to be a good call. I need another bandage so that we can get rid of our lacerations for right now. It hasn't updated at all. Oh, man. That got me excited for a second. I was like, wait, I have an extra bandage? Oh, my God. Hooray. Hooray for you, survival Jesus, and your wonders bounty. Let's go ahead and get our items created, and then I think it's going to be time to book on out of here. Book being kind of a colloquial term, I suppose. We're not going to, like, write a book about this. If I survived it, though, I would strongly think about it. You might as well turn your suffering into some form of profit. Let's go on to this side. Or you could take, I guess, the Brigham Young approach, and you could turn all your suffering into, like, profit with a PH. Eh? Make that happen. Although, I guess, in that situation, both could be considered profitable. We've got another dock over there, and I think that's going to be our best call for right now. We need to hit as many locations as we can as quickly as possible in order to ensure that we don't die from this laceration. The more things that we search, the better our chances of picking up another rag. I do wish there was an ability to tear up those clothes that we had because that was my initial response is that use the extra clothes. Oh, we got a crow right there. Got dandelions on this side. That's okay for me. Let's go ahead and grab those. I'm probably going to eat those in just a minute too. We have shelter over here, which makes me lean towards maybe waiting this out and seeing if the laceration can go away. We're bleeding pretty good, and a dog's mouth is not the cleanest. In general, if we got perforations like that, they're going to be puncture wounds. Not going to be good. Probably not going to stop bleeding for a while without medical attention. Oh, we got a flint, though. That's pretty good. Maybe you had to have a flint first before you could chop things up. Search this barrel. We got a moldy lump and another flint. What does a moldy lump do for me? Sounds like one of those insults that like an old-fashioned British guy would use. Be like, you, sir, a moldy lump. And he would just call you a moldy lump, and you'd be like, ah. You bitch. <laughs> Why would you call me a moldy lump? That's not very nice. So for the water that's clean, we put it on the raft. And so there it goes. I figure this is a good enough time as any to do the crawdad man voice. We could put garlic. It can ease the symptoms of a flu. Really? Garlic eases the symptoms of a flu? Huh. I knew that manzanita can help out if you've got a fever. But garlic helps with a flu. Weird. I never knew that. I learned something today. Let's eat some dandelions because we're looking pretty hungry. The downside here is that, like, your hunger meter goes down fast enough to where it actually offsets the things that you eat while you're actively eating them. I actually think they need to make it instant unless it's, like, a bigger meal. A dandelion is totally like a snack you can eat while walking. Not a big deal. If we had honeysuckle around here, that'd be great, too. I don't actually know the nationality of these developers. Now that I'm thinking about it, a lot of survival games tend to come from Canada, and they tend to come from, like, Scandinavia as well, but I don't know who developed this, so honestly, the things that we see around might also be a reflection of, like, where they live. I'm kind of thinking about survival from a California-centric point of view because that's where I learned to do all the stuff that I know how to do. You take me outside of that environment, which there's a fat chance of that ever happening, but if you take me outside of my familiar environment, I'm toast. It kind of reminds me of that line that they had in Burn Notice where Michael's talking about the fact that, like, a commando, people think commandos are superhuman, but he's just like, a commando is a guy that's trained to fight under a very specific set of instructions and conditions, and if you take him outside of that, he's just, like, a better trained soldier. Like, he's basically a normal soldier if you take him outside of that. Are we still bleeding right now, or do we heal up? Oh, we got a staph infection? Oh, shit. That's not good. That's, like, really, really, really bad. We got staph... Oh, no. Okay, so since we've got a staph infection... See, I'd never... I had never messed with wolves before. All the wolves that I've ever come across, I'm just going to use my good stuff right now because we're probably going to die anyways. Let's consume that right there. A staph infection out in the middle of nowhere. This is kind of one of those kiss your ass goodbye moments. Like, well, we might not make this one. We might not make this jump. We would have to, if we wanted to make this go away. We have aloe vera. Ooh, medical supplies. I mean, at this point, I would just dump... I mean, personally, I would just dump the alcohol on the wound and clean it out with whatever you have. That would be what I would do, but the game doesn't allow you the freedom to do that. You can't actually dump alcohol on a wound. So, unfortunately, it's not like playing... It's not like playing Neo Scavenger, where when you think of these options, you can actually do them. The game is... The game is fresh enough and new enough to where it doesn't have some of these features. Like, it's still in development. 
And so anyways, we've got a staff infection, which is all kinds of bad. I probably would have just dumped the liquor on the wound in the first place. All we can do now is hope that we find antibiotics or something of that nature, but eh. I think this might be it for us. This might be our last ride. No, I don't want to go this way. I want to go back this way, and I'm going to force you to do what I tell you to do with all of my strength because we need to go to the bait shack over here. It has baited me over with the chance of getting really cool stuff. I wonder if there's a vendor in this game or like somebody that'll buy and trade stuff with you. Whew, we're like barely alive and we gotta watch out for wolves now that it's nighttime. Some corn and some mulberries. This random guy singing in the background while I'm dying. Can you let me die in peace? I would love it if you would just let me die in silence. I would rather die with no music than die with country in the background. Oh my god, we all gonna die. Cause we're out on a river right now. Up, oh, staff infection. Oh no, I got excited. We got sepsis. We're toast, guys. I'm just letting you know, in the real world, people don't survive sepsis. Like, that's with, like, that's with grade one medical supplies. Like, being able to go to a hospital, people with sepsis typically don't make it. They're like, well, this is it. Let's ride along. We'll start a new game after this if it goes that wrong. And we'll just learn to stay the hell away from wolves. That's what I learned today. Oh my god. A wolf has never attacked me before. I don't know. I've played the game a bit, and a wolf never attacked me. Usually they just kind of like stand around. So I learned that the hard way. Oh good. And now we're thirsty, and also we just almost rammed into a wall. That would have been great. Oh my. There are so many obstacles down in here. Ah, no! Man, now we're wet and we got like a broken face. I'm going to assume that the bone that it says is broken is my face. Is that alright with everybody? My face bone is super broken right now. And we've got sepsis. And this dude won't shut up. He just keeps singing. He just keeps singing. Like, let me die quietly, please. Ah! I will not... We're dehydrating? We just fell into a river. I mean, you could have swallowed a couple of gulps while you were down in there. Let's go search one more location. It's probably not going to save us. This is probably going to be a real bad day for us. But you know what? There's a learning curve. We're going to make this happen, Cap'n. Oh, good. The sun's coming up. That's pretty cool. The sun will come up tomorrow. Probably not for us, but for somebody. So we got, like, some water and some... No, Wolfie, no. It's daytime. Go away. It's daytime, Wolfie. A knit hat. I got no room left. I got no room. So it looks like he's just going to hang out over there. Eating it's a bad idea, but it's good for making jerky. I don't think we're going to be making jerky anytime soon. Things are looking a little bit iffy right now on the old... I can use that to make myself better, I think. So that'll fix my... Yeah, there we go. He fixed my broke-ass face. We've got a fire over here that I can make use of. Assuming that wolf doesn't, like, come out of his stuckedness. I bet he runs up on us right now from this side. He's gonna be like, "Glomp!" Like, no! And then we're gonna die horribly. We should probably eat some food. I'm gonna go ahead and let's consume some garlic because why not? Let's take a big ass bite out of a garlic clove. Just have to deal with the fact that nobody's gonna want to talk to us after this. We're not dying starving. We're gonna be fine. I would bet you anything. We're gonna be perfectly fine except for the huge amount of bacterial clusters, the cultures of bacteria. Like seriously. We have, like, bacterial Sumerians running through. I don't know. I was just trying to think of any culture, to be honest. I didn't pick anybody specifically on that one. I was just picking any, like, random ancient culture that would show up. Because I'm like, we have cultures of bacteria. They're, like, creating hieroglyphics and, like, coming up with complex forms of science inside of our bloodstream right now. It's ugly. So we're no longer dying of dehydration. That's pretty cool. We can eat some more yucca, which will probably be... It'll make you say yucca when you put it in your mouth. That's what they named it after. But if we consume this properly, we might be okay. The sun is coming up. I'm using every resource we have available right now because we don't have a choice. Oh, good, and now we're going to be wet. Even better. Just what I always wanted. It's going to rain on my face. No! Do not go into that sweet darkness. No! We've died horrifically from being bit in the face over and over again by wolves. You survived for six days and you made it three kilometers. Good for you. Well, let's start up a new game because I like this game. I like this game a lot. Let's play it again. I can do this. We would have made it if it wasn't for that damn wolf that got in our way. This is why I'm a cat person. My dog didn't jump in to try and save me or anything. He's like, whoa, fool, you're getting bit. There's a reason I survived for so long without you. I ain't getting bit by no wolves. I'll bring you a backpack, but I'm definitely not getting bit today. <laughs> he just left our ass. That bastard. This is why I didn't give him any doggy treats. 
We got this dog, this weird looking Scottish Terrier. What we really needed was like a Tibetan Wolfhound. Tibetan Bear Dog. Have you seen those things? Oh my god, Google that dog right now. A Tibetan Wolfhound. It is the most terrifying dog I've ever seen in my life. It's a dog the size of a Volkswagen that they used to use to just like tackle and murder bears with. It was just like, it's a dog the size of a bear. It's the biggest dog you've ever seen in your life. And it's mean to boot. Like the pictures they take of those things are just like, Aah! Big slavering monster that people have trained to kill other monsters in the darkness. It's like 190 degrees in my house right now, but I can't like... So a little, it's... I'm sweating profusely at the moment. Mostly because we were about to die of sepsis, and sepsis makes me sad. So what I learned today is that in a survival situation, I would get bit in the face by a wolf, and then I would die of sepsis. Let's take our one sapling over here. It would kind of suck if any part of your name had the word sap inside of it. I don't know. Being a sap is not typically a very... Not a very generous term. Let's grab our loot over here that's always in the same spot. We'll get some water from this side as well. Sounds like there's somebody in the background right now playing like an accordion or something. It would have been better if I could have died with no country music, though. I'll just bring that up right now. If we could just kind of like die without country music, I think I could be happy in death. But if you're going to sit there and taunt me with it all the way, I'm not a country fan. It's the only genre of music that I have no mind for. And it figures. In my last dying moments, it was what I'd be forced to listen to. I'd be like, it figures. It figures. It's not really country, it's more folksy. And I do like folk music, so maybe I'll give the guy a pass. I'm gonna call it folk from now on, I'm just gonna shift my perspective. And all of a sudden, I love the music! Yay, it's folksy! I used to listen to like weird types of metal, like folk metal. It's pretty awesome, like Corpaclani. And like, for example, what was the other band? I liked Moon Sorrow quite a lot. Moon Sorrow, really, really cool band. Moon Sorrow, this is back before the internet. My mom knew that I was like a giant fan of Moon Sorrow. Like, she knew that they were like my favorite band. But they were from Finland, I think. It's been a while since I followed them. But anyways, I had all of their albums. I had a special order them at like Warehouse Music because they were imports and you couldn't get them and they didn't stock them. Back down the river we're going now. We're going to float on down the river on a raft now. See if we can find ourselves some crow daddies. Grab them crow daddies, throw them in the pot with the cayenne pepper. Anyways, so my mom somehow got a hold of the record company who got her in touch with the manager who then talked to the band. And for my birthday, they sent me their full discography and a bunch of shirts and stuff signed for free like they just did that to be nice to a fan and I was like holy shit coolest band ever like who does that who does that oh we got mulberries from that little shopping cart over there cool there's some hobo off in the woods over there like ah somebody stole my mulberries damn it this is why I need to move to a new neighborhood I don't like it here no more people be stealing my mulberries been walking around all day thinking you know what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight some mulberries, and you damn well up just done and took them. It ain't right. It ain't right, y'all. Down this way, we'll go, and I think I'm gonna try and hit this tree over here. And I mean hit in sort of the metaphorical sense. I'm not gonna crash into it and wound myself. There we go. And so now it's time for the age-old Bugs Bunny question. What's up, Doc? Or what's in, Doc? I mean, you can go for that one, too. That's like how a more hip Bugs Bunny would throw down. I'm like, What's in, Doc? Yada da boo boo, you feel me? Gigging your wig, all that kind of fun stuff. Let's search this car and see if we can find ourselves any good doodads, gugas, or otherwise tchotchkes that we can repurpose. Oh, we got some thin gloves. That's pretty good. And we can modify those. See, one of the little survival tips that most people don't know about is you can actually take cattails and then you can weave them into the knuckles of your gloves and you can make sap gloves out of cattails. No, I'm just, I'm making shit up right now. Don't listen to anything I ever say if I have like a jocular tone in my voice because automatically you know that I'm bullshitting you. Sometimes I like to say serious things in a joking tone though and just see who bites. In the case of the game, it was, oh, there's clean water in that barrel? Hell yeah. Okay, so it's a good day to be... You know what? You and your fascination with cattails. Come on, Aesop. There we go. You got the word sop in your name. That, may, that leads me to believe that you're probably not very tough. You're a milk drinker. Come up to this side. I mean, we ended up with like a Scottish Terrier. Among the dog breeds, we need like a Rhodesian Ridgeback. That's what we need if we're going to be up like in the wilderness fighting with wolves and shit. Like a Rhodesian like Ridgeback or like a Scottish or an Irish Wolfhound. Those, I saw one one time. I think it's an Irish Wolfhound. They're those big like nine foot tall. They look like giant Scottish Terriers. Like 30 foot tall Scottish Terriers. I actually, they have one over at the shelter right now. I'm assuming it's going to get adopted because that's an expensive dog over there. They have a period. It doesn't have any of the paperwork or anything like that, but most people don't care. There's a 
I go to shelters every now and again, and I just like hang out and like pet the dogs for a little bit. I don't know. It's therapeutic for me. It's nice for them. Eh. Sometimes I go to shelters and I just hang out and pet the dogs for a while. It is what it is. It's my relaxation time. That was a little bit too personal. Alright, so let's go up into this dock right here. See, what you don't know about that right there is I sneezed. I sneezed, and I had to edit it out, so that's why there was that giant blank space right there when I was talking about petting dogs. But yeah, I went and I petted an Irish wolfhound for a while. It's a big dog. She's a big lady. Big old female Irish wolfhound. I don't actually, I'm a dog person. I do like dogs and cats. I'm actually an animal person my entire life. I've loved animals, and animals like me. It drives my girlfriend crazy, because whenever we get a new pet, they always like me better. I don't know, though. Pets have always liked me, like dogs and animals. They've always liked me. I, I don't know why it is. I have like some kind of weird animal magnetism thing going on. Except for, there is an exception to this rule. I have a friend who has a Mastiff and that dog hates me. That dog is not down with me. That dog is like, who's this fool? I don't like him. Why are you in my house right now? I think you should leave. I'm like, I think you should leave, giant doggy. I'm hanging out. I'm trying to chill right now. I've been nothing but nice to you. I petted you even though you were growling at me and being like Burr! doing that low gutter. And Mastiff's kind of a terrifying dog if it's angry at you. You'd be like, I don't care if, like, a Chihuahua is angry at me. I'm like, how much damage can he do? When, like, a Mastiff is angry at you, you kind of just sit there across the room from him and you'd be like, nice doggy. I don't know why you're angry at me. I've given you treats. I've been super nice to you. I've never, like, raised my voice or made lots of noise around you. Nah, it's just because my friend lived by himself his entire life and that dog doesn't know people. That dog wasn't raised around people. My aunt and my uncle have the same problem. They've got a couple of Taverns and they do search and rescue operations. That's what they do for a living is they're search and rescue EMTs. They go up into the mountains after avalanches and stuff and they try to dig people out. That's what they do. That's what they've done for 50 years now anyways. And their taverns are trained to find, like, find and dig people out of the snow. These are enormous dogs. They kind of look like... They're sort of like huskies, but I guess the fur's a little bit longer. A little bit longer. It's been a long time since I saw the taverns, so I can't really describe them to you perfectly. But anyways, they got taverns and their dogs were not raised around people either. Their dogs are very, very sort of aggressive and protective about both of them. And so if you're up inside their house, you got to be careful about it because those dogs will suffer no trespass. Where's this wolf at? I know you're over here. Big sleeping bastard. Bash your head in with a rock while you sleep. Big old uppity furry bastard. My last death was all your fault. You made me die in the second episode. I'm looking dumb on YouTube right now. Thousands of people are going to see me just being an idiot. Then again, I assume that's the spectacle that everybody shows up for anyways. You're like, hey, let's go watch this train wreck on Splattercat's channel. That'll be fun. That'll be nice. I'm going to try and get over to this dock right here, but we are in rapids right now. And so the thing I talked about in the first episode, the raft is actually really difficult to control sometimes when you're in fast water. And that makes logical sense. But anyways, we're looking for a place to sleep for right now. I mean, you can tough it out overnight. It's not that big of a deal. You might actually, oh, there's a wolf over there. That's not good. Okay, so rather than suffer the same problem we already had previously, I think I'm just going to bail out. I don't want to get sepsis, and I don't want to get bit by a wolf, and we don't have the supplies to handle it. I definitely don't want to get bit twice. So let's just leave this one behind. That's going to be something that we're just not equipped to deal with just yet. And then I'm going to try and make it. It looks like there's going to be some kind of avenue over on this left-hand side. I'm going to try and force the raft down this corridor, and it'll catch the current in a minute, I think. Yeah, oh my god, we just barely made that one. It caught the current, it caught the current, but not so... Oh, actually, it looks like that was... I don't know that there's actually anything over here, from what I can tell. Let me get some stamina back real quick. But yeah, it doesn't look like there's anything... I thought it said that there was a... Maybe it was just the perspective of the camera or something that was making the tooltip show up in the wrong spot. I don't know what that was. I think left is looking like the best path over here. There's a lot of obstacles on the right. I'm going to try and work my way around those. Oh, I was wrong. Okay, so we got kind of like a narrow scrape right here. I'm going to go ahead and put the brakes on. See if we can weasel our way through right there. And indeed, weasel we shall. This one over here is going to be a little bit more dangerous because you see how the current right there is swirling around the tractor. Got to watch out for that. We're tired. So I'm going to suggest that we make for the church because that's going to be the only location that I know of that always allows you to sleep. I'm going to try and see if I can loot that too. Oh, we got some free jerky. Hell yeah. Okay, so that'll keep us up and floating for a little while longer. Hopefully there's no wolves. This is how we got ourselves in Mallard Park. This is how we got ourselves into trouble last time. There was a wolf about.
I'm gonna try and be cautious here. Yep, there he is. He's behind us. Yep, there he is. Okay, so I'm gonna run him a little bit around here. We're gonna have to bail out. We can't hold out on that one. That's unfortunate because we're looking tired. There's not much we can do about it. I mean, I guess we could... But even if we come back at daybreak... I think... Eh, it's not worth the risk. There's other places we can go. Let's just chill for a bit. We might black... Oh, it's gonna start raining too. This is the worst luck we could have possibly ran into right now. We're exhausted and it's raining. When it rains, it pours in this game. Literally. We might be able to chill at this farmhouse. I don't know. Let's try it. There's so many wolves around in this game, though. It seems like there's one on, like, every single map. Like, the last three. It's all RNG, though. This is a roguelike in every sense of the word, where sometimes just, like, bad RNG totally screws you. There's not much you can do about it. This thunderstorm will more than likely be the death of us, unless we can find a place to crash out for the eve. If we can sleep inside of this house, which we cannot... Okay, so we gotta worry about a couple things now. The inventory is also pretty limited, and I don't like the way that you can't move things around by stack. I wish that you could, but you can't, so, you know. That is what it is. Let's eat the yucca real fast. I'm gonna drink our only purified water, because we haven't had a chance to make a fire yet, because we haven't had a chance to bed down yet. We've still got 30 or so stamina remaining, and so I think it's gonna be a wise decision... Let's grab another sapling on this side and see what we can do with that. Maybe make ourselves a trap. I'm going to say we should probably hit the crates before we leave, too, with the spoiled meat. Okay. That's sort of all right, but I don't see any other... Oh, we got some aloe vera right there. Let's take that plant. That's way too useful to leave behind. Aloe vera, is, you can eat it, and then as well as that, it was actually a salve. You could use it to make kind of like a paste, I guess, that you can put on the inside of band-aids to get rid of, like, sunburns and things of that nature. It naturally causes human beings to heal and patch faster than we normally do. I don't know. It's some kind of weird herbalistic hoopa jube to me. I don't know anything about that. You asked me about some rocks, and I got some facts for you. You asked me about plants, and I'm like, eh, that weird stuff that grows on top of the rocks that I want to look at? I don't know anything about that, sir. Body temperature is dropping off pretty rapidly for right now. I'm going to try not to steer too aggressively because that costs you stamina. Instead, I'm just going to kind of allow this thing to drift until we make it to the next burst of islands. We are not going to have much of a choice. We kind of just got to work this thing through till the end and hope for good luck to hit us. It is daytime right now, so if we arrive at any locations, I would hope that there would not be anything there trying to kill us. The wolves do go to sleep at a certain time of day. Oh, Christ. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit weird. I'm going to try and sneak through right here and just hope that there's no weird currents around. We've got ourselves a farmhouse over there, but that's not going to provide us with any opportunities to sleep, which is what we really need. we got a church coming up on that side, and it's daytime, so I would hope that the wolves would be out. I don't know if I should stop right there or not. I think I'm just going to make through this straight right here, and I'm going to go for the church because we're close enough on supplies. We're about to black out, and we can't black out on the water. If we black out on the water, eh, problematic. We just need to get into shelter. We need to get rested. And then from there, we can regroup and try and make this thing happen. Now, if there's a wolf over here, we have to risk it. We have no choice. We have to try and run past the wolf and get ourselves into the church. And if we can manage that, normally there's a wolf here. So there's a crow. I don't see a wolf. So let's try and outlast the weather for a minute. Hey. Sleep inside of there. I demand that you do it. We'll sleep for four hours. And then we'll try and sail during the night because it seems like a better way to use my time. It's going to be sunny out. That's going to help with our dryness. And then it's also actually not going to give us nearly enough stamina. So let's take the... Ooh, rags and alcohol. Okay, so we got the stuff that we need for band-aids now. We got some more rags right there. Even better so that we can have future supplies. We got some dandelions off on this side. Those will be useful just in case we have to camp out over here for longer than I expect to. Some more stuff to search. Oh, man, they got all kinds of liquor up at the Jesus house. Okay. All right. Y'all partaking in, like, the Holy Sacrament and all that kind of stuff. And nomine Petri. At Philly. At Spiritus Sancti. All right. So let's go off on to this side. We got... I'm going to turn these into Band-Aids because it's a good way to condense the bullshit that I have on me. Uh, we need... Okay, so we need inventory space. Let's throw... The aloe vera on Aesop because I like to keep the medical supplies on him.
throw that on the raft because I don't think we're gonna need it. I do think the inventory space is pretty limited right now. I think the raft should probably be like tripled or doubled. It's a big thing. I don't know. Or maybe they could come up with a way for you to craft on the back of your raft. And when you craft on the raft, it'll make things nicer for you. We got a ton of suspicious water, but I don't want to be getting dysentery or anything like that. Since the dandelions aren't useful for anything else, I'm gonna eat those first. So let's consume that real quick. And if I can get my food back up to like the 90s, I think I'd be pretty happy. But for right now, I'm going to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me for the next episode of The Flame and the Flood. If you want to check the game out, look down below. I'll have whatever information is available at this point in its development for you to peruse. I will see you all later. Hi, do everybody.